Hi guys, welcome back to Barovia Med, and I am ill, but the show must go on. So today, because I'm not feeling the best, we're going to be doing a uh, a nice little small project, uh, nice little uh, utensil. It's not a utensil, what is it? I don't know. We're going, to, we're going to be making a toothbrush holder. I got some nice, lovely oak here. If you're a regular of the channel, you'll know this will be ripped out of a bit of furniture. This was actually ripped out of a fireplace that I got for free. There is a video on my channel showing you how you can get nice free lumps of hardwood and stuff like that. Uh, be sure to check that video out. Oh, I'm losing my train of thought here. Give me a minute. Hi guys, welcome back to Barovia Mid. Today we're going to be making a toothbrush holder out of this lovely oak. Uh, we're going to be doing just a nice little small one day build. It shouldn't take too long. So let's get cracked on. So like always, the first thing we're going to do here is cut out our stock. And if you're wondering why my voice sounds a bit different, I'm recording this voiceover about two weeks later because I am feeling a lot better now and uh, I have my voice back and everything. But you'll see a little mistake I did here. Uh, what I did is I cut the two main parts out and then I went to go cut the smaller pieces without thinking about how am I going to cut the mices into these pieces while also being safe on the table saw. And yes, I am doing this very sketchy thing, but believe it or not, I do take safety into consideration when I'm working with the table saw, but sometimes I, uh, I just like to send it. As you can see here, uh, my fence is getting in the way. It's tapered down a little bit, so I can't push it all the way through. And also, from previous projects with epoxy, epoxy has melted and gotten stuck into my riving knife, which is pushing it over slightly, so the block is getting caught into it. That, in combination with my fence having a slight taper to it, which I have no clue how to fix. If anyone in the comments knows how to adjust that down below, please let me know. But... Yeah, it surprised me a lot actually about this epoxy getting stuck under it. Like you can see it in the front and the back, how it's all just like melted and gotten stuck there. Uh, I think this is because I worked with the epoxy before it was fully, fully cured. I mean, I, it, it was cured to the point where it was solid, but it wasn't like rock hard, you know, glass epoxy sort of stuff. It was, it was solid, but not solid enough to work, I guess. And whenever I worked on it, it melted onto a lot of my tools, my surface planer, my table saw. There was a lot of cleanup, so if you're doing epoxy projects, for God's sake, let it cure fully before doing it. <laughs> but yeah, do some sketchy stuff on the table saw. So don't repeat any of this at home. But basically, to get back to what I was saying before, I shouldn't have cut those smaller pieces out. I should have cut the miters in them while cutting them out. Because, well, I have to put it on my cross-cut sled. I need a new... What is it? What do you call it? A fence or a back plate on a cross cut sled? I don't know, but I need to make a new one because there is a very slight tape. But you see where that blue line is? I put that blue line there to sort of tell me I can't hang material off there because it's not 90 degrees to the blade past that point. Uh, I know I should just, just change it, but yeah, I, I didn't. But anyway, we're cutting the 45 degree slots and angles into it. Uh, well, I say 45 degrees, I cut it a little bit past 45 degrees to make sure the very ends meet up. Because sometimes when you're cutting miters, you get a little bit of gap and it, you can stand there pulling your hair out, checking your, checking your work and stuff. And it's just, it says 45 degrees, but you put them together and they're not, they're not matching up and they're not a seamless cut. Uh, just to avoid this, go a hair past 45 degrees and they will meet up perfectly every single time. But yeah, this is what I was talking about with those small bits and how I should have cut it out first because it was just too sketchy and too dodgy trying to cut the 45 degree miters there. So I ended up just doing this in the first place. Uh, well, I should have done this in the first place is what I'm trying to say, sorry. So I marked it all out, getting everything ready to cut all the miters and stuff. And uh, to make sure to keep everything straight, I had to get another bit of sacrificial wood <laughs> and not really focusing on the camera angles. And... Uh, get that cut out i mean we managed to make it work but i do need to go ahead and replace that at some point because uh, it's, it's it's annoying to work around and i'm sorry for the lack of quality in this video i was very ill and i wasn't spending too much time focusing on camera angles and all that stuff so i was just going with the flow so sorry about the camera angles in this video but yeah anyway what we're doing now is we're cutting out everything for the toothbrush holder and the toothbrush holder we're cutting everything out for the toothbrushes and the toothpaste uh, this hole right here is for the toothpaste and as you can see there 
I went through just until there was a little hole in the back of it, then I flipped it around and put the spare bit back in. That just makes the hole a lot more cleaner. And I didn't actually have a big enough drill bit, so what I'm using here is a plug cutter to actually cut these holes. Uh, you know, as long as you go start, as long as you start off slowly, they don't wander, so it's good. And they create a very, very clean hole, surprisingly, because, you know, I can't reach down these holes and sand them properly. And if I were to reach down these holes and sand them properly, they would no longer be circles and would look a bit off. So, I just want the cleanest cut when I'm cutting something. But yeah, and what we're going to do is we're going to sand all these bits up before we glue them all together. Because, like I've done in previous projects, sanding on internal corners and stuff like that, it can make be an absolute headache. So if you can sand beforehand and tape and mask everything up while you're gluing up... It makes it a hell of a lot more easier instead of, you know, trying to scrape off glue and sand it and do all that stuff. But yeah. Anyway, I'm just trying here a little glue up method that I saw on TikTok. You basically just get four bits of scrap wood, cut a perfect 90 degree angle in them. So you have that little square there and then you can put them on the four corners of the mitres. And uh, it apparently does help in lining everything up and keep an even pressure on everything. I noticed it twisted a little bit after I... Well, I noticed after it all glued up and dried that I twisted a little bit. So this isn't a foolproof method, but this is what I used and it worked for the most part. And you'll notice there that I'm using a lot of glue. And uh, the reason I'm using a lot of glue is because we're doing end grain joints. I don't think you should put a tiny little bit of glue on and do it up because end grain will soak it all up and you'll end up with a dry joint. So really saturate the end grain with wood glue. So then it soaks in and you've still got that glue there to make that nice strong joint. But yeah, we've got a couple of clamps on it. Everything's all nice and tight. You don't want to pinch it up too much and squeeze all that glue out and create a dry dry joint. You don't want to do it too much as well to where everything explodes and falls apart. Just want to pinch it up so the glue you get a little bit of squeeze out and then you're just about perfect. So what we did is we took the masking tape off of the inside, took that all out. And I'm just going around the outside now, just giving it one little sand. I didn't bother sanding the outside of stuff uh, when I was gluing it all up because, well, I'm going to have to come out, come around and sand it anyway to make sure everything's flat. And uh, yeah, but it takes two minutes to quickly lick it up, especially on my uh, little rotary sander we have here. So this is pretty much almost done now. We're just on the home stretch, getting everything sanded. And uh, you can see just before I started sanding that how it twisted a little bit. And I unfortunately didn't notice that until after the glue up. But it's, you know, it, it, it's not important. This is this is a toothbrush holder. This isn't getting glued up somewhere else and it doesn't need to be perfectly flat. As long as it looks good to the to the human eye, you're good to go. So sanded all of that up. And now what we're going to do is give it a little bit of oil to really make that grain pop. And you can see right now it, it looks really nice as it is already. But it's going to look even nicer in a second once we get this hard wax oil on. So give it a good shake because it's cold in the winter and everything's solidifying. <laughs> uh, and then we put it all out. It's probably a bit too much I put on there for this. But you can really see how that grain pop in. And because this is uh, wood from an old fireplace, it's got a lot of character, character to it. It looks very patined even though we've sanded, we've planed, we've done all that to it. You can sort of like look at it and see that it's an older bit of wood that's been used in the past so i really do like the rustic look of this wood it's really nice and uh you'll see in the next video after this that it was so nice the person that i gave it to demanded that i made them something else to go and match with it but after we got it all oiled up i stole the old toothbrush holder put that in the bin where it belongs and replaced it with this beautiful new oak toothbrush holder and it looks so much more better it fits the toothpaste absolutely perfectly and you've got two slots to put two toothbrushes in and it came out really nice and obviously you can adjust these holes if you have like an electric toothbrush or something you can make the holes a bit bigger and uh you know all that good stuff <laughs> i don't really know what else to say but this is the toothbrush holder it looks really well <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it's funny to me trying to get cinematic sim sim I can't say the word. You guys know what I'm trying to say. Trying to get cinematic. There we go. Cinematic videos of this toothbrush holder. I've got, I'm going to go before I start fucking up even more.